When Mazda introduced the Compact 3 about 15 years ago, it quickly changed a lot of people's perceptions on small cars. The original model was sleek, it was fun to drive, but above all, it was desirable in a segment that was really known for offering a lot of bland competition. In fact, it was so desirable that it grew to become Mazda's most popular model globally, with the company moving about 6 million units since the car came out back in 2004. So as you can see, an all new model, it's a really big deal for Mazda. And today I'm just outside of Lake Tahoe, California to drive and film this all new 2019 Mazda 3. But the big question I want answered, is this all new version still the king of the compact car segment? That's what we're here to find out. So when you look at the design of the all new generation of Mazda 3, if you guys are really familiar with the previous generation, you'll probably look at this and say, it doesn't really look all that different. Mazda calls this their Koto design language too, basically their second generation of this design language that we saw back in 2013. And honestly, back then it was a radical looking design. So Mazda really couldn't change it too much to make it look even more radical. But I think they've done a good job here with this new generation. You can see the front fascia of this sedan um, is slightly different in terms of the grille, in terms of the headlights. The grille in general, is a little bit lower, it's a little bit wider. Uh, the chrome trim that you see on this sedan model comes standard. If you guys go for the hatchback model, it actually have a black grille with, um, without the actual fake inlet vents that this particular one has. It's actually a very clean look. In contrast to most of the competition, uh, Mazda decided to forego any of those you know, ugly fake vents that a lot of the other manufacturers are going with, and they kind of went with a more smoother look. Now, in terms of the headlights, full LED headlights are actually standard on all the trims, which is definitely an upgrade. Um, this particular premium trim has an upgraded LED with our also, which are also swiveling. Mazda did get rid of the LED fog lights that you had on the previous generation, which I kind of wish they didn't do. But overall, I think the front fascia looks pretty good and you'll, you'll definitely be able to distinguish it as a Mazda 3. From the side profile of the all new Mazda 3, you can tell this one is obviously the sedan. They continue to offer it in the sedan or hatchback configurations. The hatch definitely has a much more controversial look, which I'll talk about when we move to the actual rear of the vehicle. But let me first talk about the wheels. This premium trim level is the new top of the stack. Mazda does not offer a grand touring or a touring trim anymore. And they don't also offer, offer a signature trim. So premium is now the highest trim. These are an 18 inch wheel wrapped in 215 45 series tires. Now the wheel itself, I like the gray finish. If you guys go for the hatch, they offer a black finish. The sedan in base form offers a 16 inch alloy wheel standard. Most of the trims are gonna have an 18 inch wheel. Personally, I think the wheels look good. I just think that the tires are a little bit too skinny. I feel like Mazda did that for fuel economy reasons. Um, vehicles like the new Corolla or the Civic hatch or sedan offer like an 18 inch wheel with a 20 millimeter wider tire. Now in terms of the size, uh, Mazda did extend the length of the sedan uh, for this generation while the hatch kind of stayed the same. It's wheelbase at 107.3 inches long is actually an inch longer than the previous generation. And the sedan is about three inches longer overall at 183 inches long. It's about the same size as something like the new Civic or the new Toyota Corolla. So it's actually a really good size. The hatch is about eight inches shorter overall. Mazda said that they didn't change the actual length of the hatch. The vehicle itself has a wider front and rear track and it's also slightly uh, lower to give this thing a little bit more of a sleeker look. Now in terms of the actual roof line here, you can see it's very traditional. Mazda has a very smooth overall look. Instead of all these curves and these cut lines to kind of break things up, it's overall just very clean, uh, which is again, kind of against the norm what Mazda is doing uh, with their current design language with the Koto design language too. Now at the rear of the vehicle, there's a controversial change with this new generation. They've gotten rid of the multi-link independent rear suspension, replaced it with a simple torsion beam suspension. Now Mazda actually said that they necessitated the change because of the front suspension geometry being changed. They said they had to go to a simpler torsion beam, but they promise it hasn't affected the ride quality or the handling, which we'll have to figure out when we get the vehicle out on the road. 
From the rear of the new Mazda 3, you can see this is the angle of the car where you're gonna probably notice the most changes from the previous generation, especially when you look at the sedan body style. It has a much more cleaner, kind of smooth out look. Uh, surprisingly, I think this is probably the more elegant looking vehicle. The hatch had that really thick, chunky C-pillar that is, makes the car look a little bit more like a jelly bean. It's definitely an interesting look. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below if you think that the hatch or the sedan is the better looking of the two. I think from certain angles, depending on the color, the hatch looks better, especially if you guys get it in that poly metal gray which is a new color for 2019. Now you can see the taillights are going to be kind of an LED combination. Mazda actually puts an LED turn signal, LED brake lights, and LED reverse lights. So it's actually a full LED on this premium trim versus the lower trims kind of have an LED combination. The emblem here also looks interesting because it's kind of been raised up. It's also got like a black background so it kind of stands out a little bit more. Uh, Mazda I, I guess did, on, did that on purpose to give this thing a little bit more of a distinctive look. As you can see my tester is the all-wheel drive model. It has a little small subtle all-wheel drive badge under the Mazda 3 and the font for the badging back here is also different. I think it actually looks a lot more upscale versus the previous generation. Now, dual exhaust, as you can see, are standard on the sedan and the hatch. Previously, the sedan was kind of shafted in terms of getting the dual exhaust. They typically reserve that for the hatch, so I'm glad to see Mazda kind of apply that through to both of the body styles. It really helps to make this look a little bit more upscale. And then in terms of the trunk capacity, this vehicle is about three inches longer and it did go into the trunk. This is slightly larger versus the previous generation, but at only 13.2 cubic feet, it's still on the smaller side. Something like the new Corolla or the Honda Civic offers roughly around two cubic feet more space. The hatch offers more space than this. It gives you around 20.2 cubic feet of space or up to 47 cubic feet of space if you fold down those rear seats. So the outside of the new Mazda 3 doesn't look all that different, but Mazda did promise the interior is completely new. So let's hop into the interior of this hatchback model. As you can see, I've switched to the new poly metal gray. I apologize for the car being so dirty. Luckily, this color doesn't show quite as much dirt, but first things first, let's talk about the key fob for this vehicle. The hatch will come standard with the Mazda advanced keyless entry system with the push button start. You can see it's an entire entirely new key fob. It is a lot larger versus the old key, but I do like the way it looks. It's very Volvo-esque. Um, the plastic on the outside of the key does feel a little bit cheap, but you can see Moss has got all the buttons on the side here. No remote start on the key fob, however. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if you can get that as a dealer accessory, but as you approach the door handle, you can see Mazda has also redesigned the way you actually access the door. Instead of a button anymore, they've replaced it with a touch sensitive pad and if you want to unlock the door there's a sensor on the back of the handle and if you touch that that unlocks the door for you now check out the interior of this hatch it's especially really striking looking with the red leather interior i love how mazda carries over the red onto the dashboard on the seats these are heated seats they are eight-way power adjustable with a two-person memory. You get these seats basically on the premium model, but you can get an eight-way power seat with the two-person memory if you guys go for the preferred trim. You can see the door panel also has more of that red leather that's kind of accented throughout. You have these new metal speaker covers for the 12-speaker Bose sound system where Mazda has really strategically put the speakers in different locations to get the best sound. New switch gear and whatnot. It's a really nice interior that wouldn't look out of place in a luxury sedan. Now stepping inside, you can see the step-in height definitely feels a little bit on the lower end, but the dash is just really striking to look at. It's very driver-centric. Now, shutting the door, it sounds really solid. It actually sounds really uh, even more solid than the last uh, 2018 Mazda 3 that I drove. This is on a revised platform, not a new platform, but it's a, an updated platform. Now, to start the vehicle up, there's a new button here to start the engine. Just put your foot on the brake, keep the key fob in here, push the button to fire up the motor. Now you can see it's a new chime. So again, this is really adding to the whole experience that this is an all new car, which is really important when you re redesign a vehicle. And then what you heard is the 2.5 liter engine. It's the only engine available at launch. We know this motor pretty well, but I'll go into the test drive later on and we can discuss that. Now, uh, as you can see, Apple CarPlay is standard on the hatchback model. Let me unlock my phone really quick. So I can show you guys that on the new 8.8 inch touchscreen display. Now I'll go back to that screen uh, later in the video, but let's first talk about the materials in this car. You can see genuine leather stitching on the dashboard here. It's soft touch. You have a soft touch injection molded plastic here on this upper portion. It's even a soft touch right here in front of the screen. It's carried over through here on the driver instrument panel. And then the door panels over here are also soft touch with more of that stitching here. Love the metal uh, covered speaker grills. Again, it just makes this vehicle feel like a luxury 
car. Now, the window switches, you can see they are new. They are one touch automatic for all f for the front and for the rear. So it's one touch on all four. That's really nice. New window switches here, or, or I'm sorry, new mirror controls here. No power folding mirrors. I'm surprised there's like a big blank button here where I feel like Mazda could add that. Over here, you've got your memory seat control. So Mazda has moved that from down here on the seats to over here on the dash. A few more empty buttons here. I'm surprised this turns on and off the Mazda Eye Active Sense system. You have your automatic high beam switches. You can see here, even the turn signal stocks and the windshield wiper stocks are new, in addition to the new steering wheel. So really, they've invested a lot here. The gauges also are new, although they look familiar. They're basically the same gauges that we first saw on the CX-9, which was then trickled over to the CX, um, or to the CX-5 and the Mazda 6. Really like the gauges compared to the previous generation where they had those two different tier style of gauges. These are just a lot more classy and elegant looking. You can see you've got an LCD screen in the center there where you can customize a couple things. This all-wheel drive model, however, doesn't show you anywhere in here that it's all-wheel drive. In fact, what's missing is a screen that shows the torque split. I would like to see Mazda add that to, sh to show that this is the all-wheel drive model. Um, again, that's something they could possibly add later on. This premium trim has an active driving display. You can see it's now projected onto the windshield as opposed to that flip-up screen before, so that's a huge improvement. Really like that. Love the vents here with the whole driver-focused air or centric uh, dashboard here. Everything has been kind of pushed up. Mazda said they really worked hard to minimize driver distra distraction. So you've got You've got a screen right here in the center. You've got this big 8.8 inch screen here for the Mazda Connect infotainment system. And then you have a big screen for the head up display. They've even moved the climate controls a little bit higher up on the dash. You can easily see these. You can see three level heated seats, dual zone climate. That's a standard on the hatchback model. Optional on the stand, you have to get the select trim to get that. Now they've also moved over a lot of the controls here on the center, uh, center console. The Mazda Connect command controller here has been moved forward slightly. It's been slightly redesigned. It has that same satisfying Audi click that you get on Audi MMI products. The cup holders have also been pushed forward here above the shifter, which is definitely a good change. You've got a little bit of a storage compartment there. Your USB port is over there, in addition to having another USB port in here and a power outlet. You can see the black plastic trim here. I'm not really happy with it. As you can see, it's a little bit scratched already and it shows fingerprints like crazy, but I really like the overall layout, how they've pushed a lot of things over. Love how it's nice and leather stitched right here, where you would you would probably hit your knee over there. This is also nice and padded. It's huge. This is like double the size of the previous generation. So you can see this cover here. It slides forward and back, and then it opens up to reveal a pretty good amount of storage space. Now keep in mind, this one has a wireless charging pad. It is optional. It's like a two hundred seventy-five dollar option to add that from the dealer. It's a dealer installed accessory, not a factory one, but it's good that Mazda at least has that. The infotainment system. Let's go into this because this is probably going to take the bulk of it now. First of all, here's the Apple CarPlay display. You can see, love the 8.8 inch screen. It reminds me a lot of the Alfa Romeo that, had, that just basically added this screen. It looks beautiful. It's finally a really modern size as opposed to that small seven inch screen. And you can see here, if you wanna pull up your music or pull up Waze, that's what I was really trying to show up. Um, Waze is what I basically use all the time for, for GPS. As you can see, Apple CarPlay can be a little bit sluggish sometimes, but that's basically what it looks like. It doesn't take up the entire real estate of the screen, which is a little disappointing, but let me get out of this. Let me go basically back to the Mazda a home page, which you can just kind of access by pushing on the home screen over here and then going to this area here. So this is basically the new Mazda infotainment system there, Mazda Connect. You can see you've got your usual information, entertainment, communication, navigation. Here's the factory embedded GPS. This is actually a dealer installed accessory as well. I was noticing on the build site that Mazda doesn't include this on the premium package. You have to basically add it as a port option where it's, it's basically just like a USB drive. The navigation looks great. Love the new graphics here. For those of you who prefer to have um, an actual embedded GPS, this looks fantastic. Going back to the home display, here, just push this button here. You can see quadrant for your music, home, back, and then navigation. And then you've got electronic parking brake, and you've got an, um, your volume knob here, which allows you to skip. You can also turn off uh, the stereo system as well. And then there's a favorite button over there. But going back to the home screen here, entertainment system, obviously that's your different audio sources and whatnot. Going into satellite radio here, this is what I pretty much have. Um, going to the menu display here, this is where you're going to display all your favorites, um, or you can also access it through here. The system itself is very familiar to what I've seen in you know the previous generation Mazda Connect. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but I do love how it's all from like feel. Mazda basically allows you to do everything by feel. 
going to the settings here, because there's now a bigger screen here, you can see Mazda's kind of adding some more graphics here to the side to explain where you're going to. And that's a nice premium upscale feature. This reminds me a lot of BMW, of Audi products. So one thing the system is missing is um, no in-car Wi-Fi. Uh, some cars have a wireless hotspot. Mazda does not do that still, which is a little surprising to me. Uh, I think they should consider adding that. But regardless, love the Apple CarPlay. Just kind of kick over to the right. It'll take you to the Apple CarPlay. Now, putting the vehicle in traverse, no 360 cameras available. In fact, the backup camera itself looks like a carryover from the previous generation. So a little disappointing that it doesn't take up the entire screen. It doesn't even have trajectory, which is really strange. Um, no parking sensors on this one. Uh, so again, the backup camera is a little bit rudimentary. Was hoping Mazda would do something a little bit more. This is a really good improvement over the old one. It's just not still the class-leading feature. Now, in terms of some features that's also missing, heated steering well is not available anymore. You used to be able to get that as an option on the previous generation. There's some empty buttons here, which I imagine some of the other markets have for that. I like the new steering wheel. It's a tilt telescoping design steering wheel. You can see it offers a really good adjustability uh, for range. You have your steering wheel paddle shifters. You got new controls here uh, for um, the steering wheel controls here where you can change the source. You can mute the sound now. Uh, the gear shifter here, this controls the six speed automatic transmission gives you a manual mode. It also gives you a sport mode here, which is a very simple sport mode. They haven't really changed that. You can also use the paddles over here. Electronic parking brake, uh, which is definitely nice. The seats, I find them to be extremely comfortable. I really love the red burgundy cranberry leather that this one gives you. And then this pan or the sunroof here, panoramic roof is not available, is only included on the premium trim. It's not available anymore on the lower trims like they used to do. The glove compartment, as you can see, it's actually pretty big. It's a good size. Uh, it's not lined with felt, but it is damped. Uh, and I really like the interior overall. I mean, personally, Mazda has done a really good job with this interior. Missing a couple of features like ventilated seats. There's an empty button over here, which I feel like they could add. 360 camera, pano sunroof, heated steering wheel. But other than that, Mazda has seriously raised the bar here in terms of cabin quality, in terms of design, and it also feels relatively spacious in here, although the dash kind of protrudes out and you know makes it feel a little bit more claustrophobic compared to some competitors. So getting into the back seat of the new Mazda 3, you can tell this car has always kind of had a little bit more of a cramped interior or rear seat when you looked at the competition. And for this new generation, Mazda hasn't really changed that. In fact, if you actually look at the rear seat legroom, it's dropped by about 0.6 inches. Mazda now rates the space at around 35 inches of legroom. Uh, which is again pretty competitive but vehicles like the honda civic the volkswagen Jenna are going to offer a little bit more legroom so keep that in mind if you guys uh, want something with more space in the back seat the hatchback body style will have roughly the same amount of interior space in the uh, back seat here now you can see the floor is not completely flat there's a pretty big hump over here so that will you know harm the middle passenger here if you're actually trying to put three people across but as you can see i'm five foot seven i have pretty decent amount of headroom although the sunroof does take into the space a little bit but there's good foot space monster off Offers just one map pocket on the passenger side. No rear seat air vents, which really surprised me, uh, and also no heated rear seats, considering this is supposed to be a premium entry, or at least Mazda likes to market it as a premium entry. But you do still think, have things like a fall down armrest here with dual cup holders, and then the materials are also soft touch plastic, so it's good that Mazda carried over that from the front seats. So under the hood of this all new generation Mazda 3, the big news was supposed to be Skyactiv X. It was their compression ignition engine. It's what Mazda has been talking about for years because it was the first production. Uh, compression ignition engine. Unfortunately, it's not going to be available in America at launch. Instead, we just have this really big 2.5 liter direct injection four cylinder. It's the Skyactiv G engine family. It's basically a carryover motor from the previous generation. And to be honest, it's the biggest engine in the segment. Nobody else does a 2.5 liter engine anymore. Everyone's Everyone else is downgraded to or downsized uh, to like a 1.5 or a 2 liter. And they're also adding a turbocharger. Mazda is sticking with a naturally aspirated engine. So if you're looking for that, this vehicle comes standard with it. Now, it makes a little bit more power this year, 186 horsepower and 186 pound-feet of torque. That's a whopping two more horsepower versus the previous generation. So I'm glad that Mazda decided to do that. Now, most of the models will come with cylinder deactivation. That is a new addition this year. This premium sedan comes standard with it. If you guys go for the sedan with it, the lower trims, it actually won't have that feature. All the hatchbacks will have the cylinder deactivation and all-wheel drive, as you guys know, is a new option for the 2019 model year, which is the one that I have driven driving um, today. Now, in terms of fuel economy, Mazda's never really been the class leader in that department either. And the old generation model, the best it got was up to 38 MPG with the old two liter engine, which Mazda doesn't offer anymore. Now, the best MPG you're gonna get is actually this one that I have here. It's rated at 27 in the city, 36 on the highway. 
which is again about four mpg short of the magical 40 mpg number that you really want in this segment if you guys go for the all-wheel drive model it does drop the mpg by a couple uh, mpgs the hatchback model drops to around 26 35 and then if you drive if you guys want the all-wheel drive hatch that's the lowest rated it gets 24 city 32 highway thankfully they all they all use regular gas and with all-wheel drive like this one it weighs around 200 pounds more than the standard front wheel drive model this weighs around 3200 pounds which is a little bit heavier than something like the subaru impreza that's this car's main competitor but thankfully unlike the Subaru, Mazda puts the power out through a six-speed automatic transmission, which is standard on the sedans, available on the hatchback, or it's actually standard. A manual transmission is still available if you guys go for the front-wheel drive premium hatchback. So you basically have to get a top trim in front-wheel drive to get a six-speed manual. That's the one that enthusiasts are probably really interested in to drive, but for today's video purposes, we're going to be focusing more on the all-wheel drive sedan or in hatchback with the automatic transmission. Now, I know you guys are probably tired of listening to specs, so let's get out on the road and see how this new powertrain performs. So the moment you guys have been waiting for, how does the 2019 Mazda 3 drive and for the media drive today I've got my driving partner here Clint from motor1.com uh, he's gonna give a couple of commentary with this car he actually used to own a GTI so he loves this segment of vehicle unfortunately there's no Mazda Speed 3 and Mazda says that a Speed 3 just isn't coming because why isn't it coming they're just not interested in it I don't know that's part of our job this week <laughs> is we have to convince them that's something we want them to bring back yeah I, I think what from what I, I understood they want their cars to be more premium and the Speed Speed 3 lineup was just so much. It was just so much of a hooliganism. It was just um, an adolescent car. It wasn't in line with their Mazda Premium philosophy, which I kind of agree. But at the same time, they need to add some of that hooliganism back to the brand because if they go a little too mature, they may start to lose some of their younger audiences that tend to really buy this generation or the last generation Mazda 3 and the one before that. But Driving this new model, it definitely feels a lot more upscale than the previous generation. The first thing I'm noticing right off the bat is the noise levels in here. They've added a lot more sound deadening materials. They've added just thicker glass here and there. They've just they just really made it a lot quieter. And it's basically as quiet as the CX-5 and the Mazda 6. So that's really, really good because the old one just had so much road noise. It was really annoying whenever you drove it on longer trips. Now, this has the 2.5 liter engine with all wheel drive. There's nobody behind me. I want to just do a a quick little acceleration run and then I'm gonna put it into sport mode here and I'll try to brake torque it a little bit and we're at 6,000 feet above sea level so keep that in mind it's gonna affect the power a little bit <laughs> yeah I mean it's plenty adequate but I really need to drive this car back home where I'm not at, at elevation because um, it's just really affecting the power. That's where a turbo engine would really make this thing a lot peppier. In fact, Mazda says the 2.5 liter turbo from the CX-5 and the 6 would fit in this thing, but they're kind of waiting, they're exploring their options. They're gonna wait to see if there's enough demand for it. So if you guys want a turbo, make sure you let Mazda know in the comments below that they need to put a turbo in this vehicle. Now, as this one sits at this elevation, we're probably, it feels like a zero to 60 time of around nine seconds. It feels a little sluggish. Would you say that's yeah, what you think? Yeah, I think that's totally fair. The, the speed's is right around where you're at right now, 3,000 to 5,000 in the rev range, because yeah. there's just not a lot of guts. It's a matching torque figure, so it's 186 pound-feet and 186 horsepower, too, so it's lower than what it should be, maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, it's great that this is such a big engine, because everything else has gone to a small displacement turbo that's just downsizing, but Mazda's really not going with that trend, at least for now, because the Skyactiv-X engine is just not available in America yet, and every time I ask Mazda why is it not available, they say they don't want to talk about it because they're just it's just not a market for it in the US but I disagree with them entirely because this engine definitely could or they could definitely put more guts in this in this car more torque is what it needs but thankfully in terms of the handling um, the biggest change that torsion beam rear suspension but going through the corners here the car still has really good steering it's really communicative it's really precise it really talks to you it has good weight to it as well and it doesn't have any of that fake heft that you get in some of the competitors like you put those into a sport mode Mazda's only adjust the transmission it doesn't actually adjust the steering or the suspension but it's just a really great handling car that stays relatively flat this chassis could handle so much more power like 300 horsepower 
with yeah. all-wheel drive and a dual clutch. That's like, the best point you made earlier, <laughs> too, is I think like everything about the steering and the way it handles is set up to where you, you want more power out of it. No, I mean, they could really have a Type R or Golf R competitor on their hands. Just bring back the Mazda Speed. I think they could do a more refined Mazda Speed that kind of goes in line with their Mazda Premium philosophy. It just needs more guts. It, but I mean, as this one sits, it's perfectly fine for a daily driver. Um, but really, when you start driving the Mazda 3, you really will notice the chassis could handle much more power. Now, in terms of just driving the car normally, I'll take it out of its sport mode here. Um, the visibility in here is surprisingly good. I mean, you have these really chunky A-pillars here that do cut your visibility, but the side mirrors are a good size. This trim level comes standard with their iActive Sense, so it has all of the driver assistance stuff. It has uh, a new driver attention monitor, so it monitors your face if you start to fall asleep and whatnot, it will tell you. It's got blind spot monitoring, rear, rear cross traffic alert. The view out of the back is good, although the hatch has that thick, chunky like D-pillar in the back. So, it's huge. Yeah, so that, I don't, Clint really doesn't like the, the thickness of that hatch, so but. <laughs> three C's. <laughs> but this actually doesn't look as bad. So, um, and the hatch, I'll have to. We'll get. We're, get, we're gonna get into the hatch later and drive that. Uh, we'll have to see if it really affects the visibility. But in terms of the ride quality, it's good. The road noise is good. This is pretty much up at the top of the class. It is still on the firmer end of, of the ride, but I don't think it's harsh. I don't think it's you know it's gonna be a deal breaker unless you're really used to driving like old Cadillacs and Buicks from the 90s. <laughs> I think they really nailed the driving position too. They were making a big fuss yesterday about how they added uh, extra lumbar in the back and they extended the area. That seat right below your thighs to kind of keep you more upright um, and the driving position sort of matches the really good visibility like you were just saying. Yeah no the seats I think are really comfortable like they hold you in place nicely but the leather's nice and soft and supportive uh, the heated seats are nice but I'm really sad about no ventilated seats yeah. like ventilated seats are missing heated steering wheel is missing and you know for a car company that says that this is supposed to be a premium car those are features that I think buyers would really like to have especially when you guys go you know at the top end another thing I'd like to see a panoramic sunroof. I mean, this standard size sunroof is nice, but you have to buy this premium trim to get the sunroof. Mazda used to offer the sunroof on the touring grade uh, as like a $1,500 option. So again, you can't really, you know, get some of the features that you used to have. But one thing I, they did really improve, the head-up display uh, is really nice. It's now a windshield projection instead of that cheap little screen that would open up. It really annoyed me. I never, I never liked it. Um, so they've really upped that. The infotainment system here is also really nice because it's right in your line of sight. And Mazda, again, kind of took away the touchscreen functionality, which we were kind of a little bit apprehensive about it first because you know I like using a touchscreen, but I guess this is, the line of sight here is nice, and then the controller here you can kind of just you know use it all by feel, and then you kind of just can glance over there. Really Everything's quickly. pushed a little bit forward in the dash compared to the previous gen cars. Even the gauge cluster in front of you, the, the touch, or not the touch screen, the, <laughs> the infotainment system. Yeah, you can't even, I can't even reach this anymore. It's it's way too far. But I mean, the rest of this interior is so beautiful looking. Um, it's got real leather, like accenting the dash. I really love this, you know, color combination that we have yeah. with like the white seats. You can also get a red leather on the hatchback. So it's it's all really nice. Now, I just want to do another acceleration real quick because <laughs> I just want to see, I'm going to try Turn off the traction control this time and put it back into sport mode. Let me try to brake torque it a little bit more. Yeah, 2000 RPM is the most it'll do. All the way to the red line. <laughs> Sorry, Clint, this isn't as fast as your GTI, but again, this isn't really a GTI, it's more like a regular golf. So this compares nicely to a regular golf, even though the golf has like 170 horsepower or something like that. So really the, the transmission, I want to talk about that because it's only a six speed automatic. It's a conventional automatic. Mazda says that they've adjusted the programming, the software, but it, all the hardware is the same. I think the transmission, while it is responsive, uh, I think it could use two more gears. I think Mazda hasn't updated it with more gears because of a cost cutting measure. And it also doesn't shift as fast as it, it should. Like this transmission was great back in 2014 which was five years ago. Yeah, crazy, God. right? Um, but the rest of the competition has, competition has kind of moved on and Mazda really needs to introduce more gears. They need to make a quicker, shift, quicker shifting transmission. The paddles, while they are nice to have, and they surprisingly will rev match, mm -hmm. but it's just such a slow shifting transmission and it kind of takes away from the sportier feel, but it goes 
very much with the premium, like grown-up feel. This is a very grown-up feeling car. I find little reason to get the Mazda 6 unless you want that turbo and you need a little bit more space in the back seat and whatnot. But other than that, it just feels like a smaller version of the 6. It would really challenge a lot of, you know, premium luxury stands like the Audi A3. I haven't driven the new A-Class, but this feels a lot nicer than the old CLA for me. The CLA had a lot of road noise and it had a, a really terrible dual clutch transmission. Yeah. But especially the interior when you look at you know right around thirty thousand dollars is going to cost plus or minus when you're measuring it up against that bar it's really nice it's yeah. really really nice but i'll have to wait and get this out, one out in my home area to try out the fuel economy to test out the acceleration again keep in mind this all-wheel drive model is about 200 pounds heavier so at 3200 pounds it is a little bit heavier than the front wheel drive model and not but faster not faster not right because faster. of the weight but yeah. um, when we get to the hotel mazda actually says that there is a manual transmission hatch there front wheel drive but there's only one and there's like 24 journalists so gonna I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can try to get some filming on that one to show you guys the manual but that's I mean that's the one that's gonna feel a lot more sportier this is the really great commuter car that has you know it's a classy car it's got plenty of room in the trunk and in the back seat it's got good gas mileage and it's gonna be a really you know solid option if you guys are looking for a compact car so after spending the day driving the all new fourth generation Mazda 3, I'm happy to report that everything that I liked about the previous model has basically been carried over. Mazda has preserved the fun to drive dynamics. They've made the car look even more sophisticated and they've made the interior an even nicer place to spend time. I wouldn't hesitate to put that interior into a $50,000 car if it just had a couple of more upscale features to it. Now, the first thing I wanna do, I wanna apologize about the way this car looks. This Soul Red Crystal is their signature color and honestly, it's gorgeous, but what looks like scratches here is really just some salt because as you can see there's like a five foot snow bank around me and I'm standing out here in just a t-shirt instead of an actual coat but um, but I want to touch base on the most controversial change to this next generation model the switch to the torsion beam semi-independent rear suspension now a lot of you definitely gave Mazda a lot of crap for doing that change however after spending the day driving this new model it still rides really well it still handles really well so thankfully it hasn't actually affected the handling or the ride comfort it's just I guess Mazda decided to do some cost cutting but at least you're not going to really notice it in fact if you didn't tell me that they switched to a torsion beam I wouldn't have been able to guess anyway so that's kind of good engineering on Mazda's part now in terms of which one to purchase I definitely think that the sedan has a much more elegant look to it although the hatch is definitely the sportier uh, vehicle their new design language has removed any of the sharp creases or a lot of those fake scoops that you've seen a lot of the competition. And I'm happy to report that some of you are really going to prefer that. It's bold for Mazda to introduce a vehicle that has very smooth, clean lines that I think will also age a lot better versus some of the competition. Personally, I think the hatch actually looks better, although it's got that thick, chunky seat pillar. It looks a lot better in person, but you guys will have to let me know if you think, again, the sedan or the hatch is the better looking vehicle. Now, if you guys are looking to purchase a 2019 Mazda 3, these are actually already on sale at your dealership today uh, with starting prices actually a lot higher versus the previous generation the uh, base sedan basically the base base model now starts at $21,000 plus like a $9.95 destination charge that's about a $3,000 increase versus the previous generation model which again remember that previous generation model had hubcaps it had a two liter engine with less horsepower so technically they are giving you more features and a more powerful engine uh, considering the fact that the old 2018 model started at around 21,000 with the 2.5 liter engine. So they've kind of kept the pricing in line. From there on out, you can basically add um, a signature package on the sedan, uh, a premium package and a preferred package, the premium being the top of the stack. I would highly suggest adding the signature package because it adds the iActive Sense, it adds the uh, Mazda Advanced Keyless Entry, it adds the Leatherette Interior, uh, it adds the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. For $1,600, it's kind of a steal. Now this premium trim that I'm showing you here is significantly more expensive than the base models. Uh, it starts at around $27,600 plus that destination charge. Keep in mind that the hatchback model is about $1,000 more expensive than a comparable sedan, but the hatch isn't available as the base base models. They actually come standard with a select package, so they start at around $23,600. Now it does make the new model roughly about $1,500 more expensive than the previous generation, but for all the new technology, for the new updated styling, for the much more premium interior and that updated infotainment system, I think it's definitely worth the money and it makes the Mazda 3 roughly around the same price as its competitors at the top end especially when you look at something like the Subaru Impreza with all-wheel drive that's going to come in at around $29,000 as well but I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Mazda 3 premium sedan if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on Facebook and as always guys please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews thank you so much for watching I'll catch you all in the next video